All right. Tuesday afternoon, loaded baked potato for everybody. Great to have you with us. And it's going to be, I think, a positive show today. But I want to start by by saying goodbye. I ha- I have to say goodbye to something. And you know, we had this conversation briefly. And when I get no resistance from Rico, no resistance from Kenneth G. Cott, and not even Paul Sarah, who's joining us this week with David on vacation, not telling me it's unfair, Michael. That's when I know there's a problem. I think we have to today eulogize something we've all enjoyed, something that was a part of the fabric of our sporting lives for roughly the past 20 years. <laughs> what? Nothing. I you was don't like- laugh during a eulogy. I was it was sadness. I was thinking of the happier times. It, there were happier yeah. times. I think we have lost an innocence today. Um I, I think we have a murder that's taken place in the world of sports. Sports betting has murdered fantasy football. Fantasy football has been pronounced dead at two oh three on Tuesday afternoon, August twenty ninth. Because people I mean this. There is no one talking about it. No one. I haven't heard a single person ask me a fantasy football question all summer at this station. I haven't seen anyone with their fantasy football website or magazine at this station. Wow. We do not have a fantasy league at this station. Kenny does hasn't had to, hey, guys, can I get going early? I have a draft at this station. Nothing. I will say this. Evan had a fantasy draft. Okay. It's not, it's it's almost, it's like the last blockbuster. Uh, Yes, in Bend, Oregon or (laughs) whatever it is. But I I, I wanted to ask this to you, the people. You know, Kenny and I were joking around, but like I was a huge fan of the TV show, The League. You ever watch that? Yeah, I did. Funny show. I, I found it funny. And like, I've got my one fantasy league I still participate in, primarily because of my dad. And I, I I actually was like, wow. I haven't prepared. All my prep has gone towards a sports betting podcast in that space. I had to double check who the hell was on my team. And I started thinking about how it used to be. I mean, yes, you could play the old people music here if you like. Fantasy used to be something you really started getting into when training camp opened. And you started your studying and talking about it, and your league would ball break and the rest. And it's like, I think gambling has killed it. Training camp, draft day, because you're now looking yeah. at, you know what, this potential rookie, Jameer Gibbs, oh, you know, think of all the catches he'll get and the fantasy points. No. If, you're, if you're listening to this right now, is fantasy dead? Like, the thought of, I mean, I'll give you an example. Like, I know there are people who still play because I know certain people in the space. Like, you know Dave Richard, Mm -hmm. CBS? Like, I've known Dave for, Christ, I don't know, 15 years. Wonderful guy. I didn't know that. They have a really popular podcast. But I know some people play. It's just I feel like it's no one who's actually around us or on planet Earth. And I just wanted, like, are you someone who used to play fantasy football who now just bets on sports? Like, are are you still? Because I miss the the innocence of fantasy. You put your money down. You have your draft party. The draft's the best night of the year for a fantasy league. But then you have your fake team the whole year. It's not three hours. Didn't you do an actual auctioneer? We did. Here. (laughs) Like, I just I I think that... Mike, this is one of the unfortunate things that passed away, and I think COVID kind of buried it. COVID killed fantasy. Because you couldn't meet up with your teams, and that year you didn't know if it was going to be football, and then you realized you did a year, because that was me. I was in a league for 20 years, and it ended. COVID year, we never picked it back up. Nobody's ever said, hey, you want to do it again? It was just kind of one of those, we talk about how good it was. See? The great times. And then gambling came in at the same time. Was which, Benito in this league? He was not in this league. But there may or may not have been a Lions play-by-play guy in the league. So, 
Oh. Yeah. Excuse me. Oh, my. This guy. I was in an industry league. 248 539. names? I'm... It's not a name drop. Dave's a very nice man. I hope you go listen to his podcast. The point is, it's like, okay, Matthew Barry. All right? Now, I think he's terrible, but that's aside from the point. NBC paid a lot of money for him. And yet, I don't know anyone who's really in the fantasy in the wake of sports betting. No. I just would like to know is it dead? I think it's dead, Mike, because fantasy requires patience. Fantasy requires you doing homework and doing your due diligence and hoping that it's the long game. At the end of the road, you will win the pot. You will win the prize. Sports gambling three now hours. says, you know what? You got a hunch. You don't even have to wait three hours. Now, the way you bet, it's 10 minutes. Right. Rico betting on the coin toss. Anytime touchdowns. Instead of scoring for my fantasy team, how about I place a bet for these 10 guys to all score a touchdown? And if they do, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Oh, only seven of them scored? Great. I made money today. And look, we got stuff to get to today. Obviously, final cuts. Lions apparently hate their kicker. Um, I think they have a fatal flaw we got to talk about. Rico's going to be angry at four, and I don't want to partake, but I will. But I just, I had to start with this. I had the conversation, talked to my dad, and I, I just started thinking about it. Like, usually this time of year, you get requests to do fantasy stuff, show or otherwise, podcast stuff. Nothing. Nothing. It. I mean, it, it is just vapor. And I'm actually sad about it because fantasy is different than gambling. Gambling, you're a lone wolf. It is Detroit versus everyone, and you're Detroit. It's you versus the book. And you don't suck at gambling. The players suck at playing. Mm -hmm. But with fantasy, it's a group event. It's a different thing. It is. And I just wonder if we've killed it off. I mean, I remember having the chart that you would oh. like have to hang up there in the color I coded positions. I miss the stickers. Yeah. I miss the stickers. It was always guy who drafted somebody. Like, is this guy? He thought he got the steal. Oh, it's the eighth round, and nobody's taking the running back. Blew his was, ACL out. No, or the either, yeah, he was taken in the first round. <laughs> Guy's dead. <laughs> Adrian Peterson. He was the number one pick. That's why he's yeah. Why is Ray Rice still here? <laughs> but I, I want to know. I have to ask the question. And I, you know what? I'm a little more melancholy about it because I can't be at my. I'm that guy this year. I can't be at my fantasy draft. Oh, yeah, there was always phone guy. I'll be drafting from the tarmac. Oh, uh, so. Like, it, they've delayed the draft so that I can at least land in New York, and I will be drafting from an Uber slash hotel check-in process. You're right, Rico. He's phone guy. There's always phone guy and then guy who accidentally auto-draft guy. Right. No, I'm phone yeah, guy. phone guy, auto-draft guy, double-pick guy. Like, we used to, it was so bad that if you did the double-pick and wasted our time, especially if we had to wait the five minutes you had to put money in the pot. That was, a, it, mm. you know what? $10 right there. You what do you think the reality is? Look, sports gambling, obviously, it's booming. But what is the reality? Like, what percentage of people do you think have left fantasy football to just bet on games? Be realistic. Don't be Rico. You always do these binary things of it's everything or nothing. You know, let's find a middle ground. Let's give love a chance. I'm very analytical. Yeah, okay. I would say have just left and never came back. 33%? No, I'm going to say probably more than that, Mike. I think you're probably half? about half the people. Oh, my. Just left and never came Kenny's back. Kenny's nodding with approval. Naturally, because he's your parrot. Let, let's go to Kenny. No, I, I agree. I do. <laughs> I will parrot him this time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say 45, 50%. You think fantasy football is down by 50%? I do, because all the people that I used to play with religiously, I was in usually anywhere between one to three leagues every single year, religiously. All gone. All, all the leagues have gone, and nobody from those leagues has reached out and said, hey, we're trying to start something new here. Let's all yeah. get together. We never get those invites, those notifications, nothing. Because now you know what you've become? The people at the retirement home where you just talk about the good old days. Hey, remember when we did this? You want to do it again? Nah, I'm busy. And people will come up with this. You know what? I don't want to do it. Just no. Sorry. Because you don't want to. The gambling, Mike, you don't have to follow. Because the other guy that you always had was I don't care guy. And after about week five, when his team was 0-5, he ran a ghost ship. And the commissioner would have to come in there and set his lineup. That's why you got to run a dynasty league. 
So keeps people engaged. But with this, with gambling, if you have a bad week, you come back next week, you make money. If you're 0 and oh, 5, is that 0 how and that 6, works, no, 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 but I'm saying, but if you're 0 and 6 in your fantasy league, <laughs> call because, Rico's hotline now. He's going to f your bookie. No, nah, but with all, well, yeah, because you had this great lineup and they all died and blew out their knees and whatever, and now you're sitting there, you you have no shot at winning. But if you are gambling, you pick whoever you want that week and you try to win money. We get Rico a T-shirt that has a deposit button on it. I thought I was. Yes, moon vest. <laughs> you are a moon vest beard. Yes. Mr. Media Market. Okay. Um, no, I want to talk to the people about it. I, I am actually, I'm kind of sad about it. And at 3 o'clock, I have a question for Lions fans. And I, I hope you tell me I'm wrong. But I think there's a conversation to be had. We don't know the cuts today, and really, who cares? I mean, are, are, hey, Trinity Benson, is that a real person? 248. Yeah, we're not doing that. He'll get cut and he'll be back. I mean, Who he's, are he's these like, people? people? He's like a rash. He just does not go away. Oh, my. <laughs> Did you have, like, personal history with Trinity? No, I'm just saying. It's like he leaves. They trade for him back, and then they cut him, and he leaves, and they trade for him back. It's like, what is going <laughs> Right. <laughs> Trinity's back on our doorstep with a duffel bag. Right. And we cut your ass. I'm back. You traded for me, apparently. <laughs> We're going to try this one more time. No, I'm not leaving. Changed. I ain't leaving. Nobody wanted me. I've changed. I'm different. <laughs> Trinity Benson, what are you doing in my car? <laughs> I mean, right. Akil Badu came and picked me up. <laughs>